Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Mayor Giuliani, thank you for being here today. Thank you very much, Bill, and uh, thank you all very much uh, for being here today. Uh, New York City has been through uh, the worst attack that's ever been uh, ever occurred in the history of America on September 11. Uh, we had more people lost, uh, more damage, more uh, sorrow that's still flowing from it than I think uh, anyone ever anticipated that we would have to suffer in the United States. But the end result is that New York City has emerged from that and continues to emerge from it stronger, uh, much more confident in uh, our ability to handle this, much more confident in our system, much more convinced that we're right and they're wrong, that we're right about political freedom, we're right about economic freedom, we're right about religious freedom.
and that, we, and that we should be very, very proud and very confident that the ideas of, for which we stand and the ideas for which we've lost uh, so many people are the right ones and they will prevail. I want to thank Bill very much uh, for uh, doing this launch here in New York City. Uh, it shows a tremendous... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> It shows a tremendous amount of confidence in the city of New York, and it shows uh, the exact spirit that Americans have, which is in part a spirit of defiance, and in particular a spirit of confidence that, uh, that our American system uh, is right for us and right for the rest of the world. So I, I wish you the very best of luck with it, and I thank you and all of the other business leaders that are here uh, for this launch of this new product, which, uh, which really couldn't come at a better time uh, for the city of New York. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Microsoft salutes you and all of New York for your courage, determination, and resilience. You are truly an American hero. And, and so are the police and firefighters and citizens who risk their lives at a moment's notice to help others. We are proud to come here today and bring thousands of developers, retailers, and PC manufacturers from all over the world to New York. A few weeks after the September 11th attacks, I called the mayor to ask him whether he still thought it was appropriate to hold the launch here. Without hesitation, the mayor said, absolutely. And I agree. There was only one place to launch Windows XP, right here in the heart of New York City. <laughs> Yesterday, I visited Ground Zero. I will never forget the devastation and the sheer inhumanity of what I saw. But I also saw America's strong spirit, courage, character, and community. I also visited the command center, where PC technology is helping to coordinate the emergency efforts. And I met with employees from Microsoft and many other companies who are helping with the relief and rebuilding efforts. I've been struck by the role that technology played and especially that the internet played during this crisis. On September 11th, hundreds of millions of people relied on the internet to get news and to communicate with loved ones. Today, we're here with a few simple messages. First, we all fully support the global effort to fight terrorism. Second, New York is back and open for business. And third, <laughs> and finally, although our economy is going through tough times, the technology industry will keep making the investments and innovations that will re-energize our economy. Once again, Mr. Mayor, thank you for your great work and for your support of our industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, actually, there's one point that I... Bill said something that I should have mentioned when I spoke earlier. Uh, the command center that uh, was erected would not have been possible without the help of Microsoft, many of your other uh, businesses in, in the technology uh, industry, uh, all of whom devoted a tremendous amount of work over it. 48-hour period, non-stop. The command center that now exists was destroyed at 7 World Trade Center. It was crushed on September 11th. It was rebuilt by September 14th. And without technology, without the computers that we have there, without the connection to the internet, New York City would not have been able to function. So the point that you make is a very important one. And the role that your industry plays in the security of America is an enormously important one. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
They rebuilt that in 48 hours. Now, that was amazing. And your people? For 25 years, Microsoft has been working to take software and build the best possible tool that we can for our users. Today is a major milestone in that effort. Today we launch worldwide Windows XP. This is a version of Windows that will take the PC industry to new heights. We can improve the way people do their work, we can improve the way they get information and entertain themselves at home. Technology has always been about making the impossible possible. And with Windows XP, we hope to do just that. Open up new possibilities. After you see Windows XP, I hope you will say, yes, you can do that with your PC. Not in the future, but now. So the whole PC industry has come together around this launch. Windows XP is the most powerful, fastest, most reliable operating system we have ever done. We poured literally billions of dollars of development into this new product. That was based on the feedback we had from our users, based on a vision of new activities that the PC could enable. The new security is very important. The privacy control is important. The messaging for real-time connections as a, is a foundation. The new personal digital experiences really will look back and say it's common sense. Uh, these are the ways that people uh, deal with information. Together with Office XP, Windows XP will set a new standard for business. So the foundation we've got here, it's a platform. It's a, a platform that allows people to develop on top of it. For the last several years, we've been enhancing the platform. We've been sending out beta versions uh, and sharing the information so that people would have a chance at the same time that we come along with Windows XP to release their applications. It's also about new experiences. You can, you can experience a lot of new things just because of the built-in capabilities of Windows. And that's where the XP name comes from. It's, it's about Windows experiences. But I want to emphasize that as important as this milestone is for Microsoft, it's also an industry milestone. The PC manufacturers are here today. In fact, earlier we had a CEO panel uh, where the, 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 the PC makers, uh, Intel, uh, Staples, a leading retailer, we all talked about how we're getting our energy behind this, how we can get people to see new possibilities and either buy new PCs or upgrade their PCs. So it's really through the new things that are built on top of Windows that it fulfills its full potential. Uh, we have a pavilion uh, here at the launch with lots of partners showing off their new software applications. And it's large companies, small companies, all very excited about what people will be able to do. We are seeing PC designs 
optimized for Windows XP uh, for the, the quick performance, the, the quick booting, building 802.11 in. And so it's all the elements, the hardware and software coming together along with the applications that make this so important for the industry. Perhaps most important though is that this is a milestone for PC users. People spend a lot of time in front of their PCs. We have over 400 million users who sit down and use Windows every single day. And it's for them that the ability to do what they do now in a better way and get more satisfaction out of that, as well as start to see the new possibilities, the things that they wouldn't have thought about doing with their PC, that we now guide them into those things uh, in a very simple way. So what, what pieces uh, have, have we thrown out here? Well, in fact, uh, in a sense, uh, this is the end of an era. Uh, Microsoft and the original PC rose to prom prominence based on the MS-DOS product. And even as Windows came along, Windows 3.1, Windows 95, Windows 98, underneath, uh, MS-DOS was running there. Windows simply sat on top of, of MS-DOS. Well, so today, it really is actually the, the end of the MS-DOS era. It's, it's also, we would say, the end of the Windows 95 era. That was the most important Windows milestone up to this day. And even when we did that launch, we talked about uh, that the Windows 95 era would come to an end. Let me show you a little clip from uh, the Windows 95 launch. I get interviewed a lot. People say, well, you know, isn't this a huge problem between you and Apple that you've got this Windows 95 thing? And I say, no, it's really, we're really coming together because until today, only Apple thought Windows 3.1 was a crummy operating system. And now we agree Windows 3.1 <laughs> is a crummy operating system. And someday we'll say that about Windows 95, I'm afraid. <laughs> but give us two or three years uh, before we can uh, figure out why we're going to have to say that. <laughs> well, it, it took more like six years. Uh, but certainly our users uh, gave us a lot of reasons to say that Windows 95 simply isn't good enough. Well, let me uh, herald the uh, end of the, the DOS era here. Uh, I'll just simply type exit for the last time uh, in uh, MS-DOS. Excuse me, Bill? Yes, DOS? Bill, I brought you the PC. <laughs> I helped make Windows. And I'm running over 400 million PCs today. You aren't going to do this, are you, Bill? Sorry, Doss. <laughs> well, that movie wasn't called 2001 for, for nothing. So, in many ways, this is a transition point. It's the end of, of too many PC crashes. Uh, it's the end of the static web era and the start of an era that, where the web will be dynamic, will program against the web. Uh, this new term, XML Web Services, you're going to be hearing about that more and more uh, because Windows XP lays the foundation for that. I also hope we'll say that it's the beginning of the end of the narrowband era that people see with XP and its capabilities that broadband really should arrive uh, not only for businesses but eventually for consumers as well. You can say what we've done here is we took the best of uh, Windows 95, 
the broad usage, the large number of applications. And we took that compatibility, and over all these years, we are able to build that into our high-end technology, the so-called NT kernel that's at the heart of both the professional and home edition here. It's revolutionary to be able to do that, and yet we made it evolutionary in terms of the user interface, the applications. We've allowed people to take that step up. Of the installed base, over 400 million use the 9x code base, and about 70 million uh, use the Windows 2000 that was based on that technology. Now, all of those people uh, will be working with uh, the high strength base operating system. And it will give the industry the opportunity to focus all its energies around uh, the driver model and the richness that's possible with that technology. Well, there's one person who throughout the decade he's been at Microsoft uh, has constantly been saying, we've got to get to this new level. We need it for reliability. We need it for the new capabilities. And he has persevered uh, year after year. Uh, that's, of course, Jim Alchin. Jim runs the Windows group. Uh, he, I'm very proud of the work he's done. Uh, he's really the one person we can point to and say, Congratulations, uh, we've finally gotten there. Uh, this, is it. this is a really big beginning, and you drove it and made it happen. So let me welcome Jim on stage uh, and congratulate him for the great work. Well, you stuck to it, Jim, and, and now we're finally here. Yep, it was 12 years ago that you first <laughs> talked to me about coming to Microsoft. And what did I say? You said, we gotta get, we got to get to the one code base. I said that, that no, I didn't think that this was the, the place for me. I thought maybe the right thing to do was to, um, you know, go to a company that believed in really reliable systems. And when I came out to <laughs> Microsoft, you and Paul Moritz brought me over and said, you know, there's this new guy we just hired. His name's Dave Cutler. Why don't you talk to him for a minute? Of course, Dave is the person behind the VAC system. And I went over to Dave, and you may not know how Dave talks, but Dave says, I don't work on toy systems. I only work on real systems. And that was the beginning 13 years ago. He had already started two years before I started there. Then the history, this long journey that we've been on. So it's been an exciting journey for me and the team. And today, we're unleashing that real system. A system that's more reliable, more secure, and easier to use. Now go ahead and show them what it's like. Okay. There are many reasons. <laughs> there are many reasons why Windows XP sets the new standard. Let's just talk about reliability. This slide says 10 times more reliable. In our testing and in e-testing, it shows 30 times more reliable, and that's. Still, the operating system hasn't crashed. Some application, business applications stop, but not the operating system. This is compared to Windows 9X, 98. In Windows 2000, Windows XP is still more reliable, at least 20% more reliable in our testing. What about performance? Windows XP is 36% faster running Windstone 2001 on business apps, 77% faster if you're running content creation. The system boots faster, up to 27% faster than Windows 98 Second Edition, and it loads apps that you've been using frequently 25% faster. What about security? Well, Foundstone says that Windows XP can provide the strongest network security available. Now, why is that? Well, there are many things that we added to the system. Internet firewall, so that when you install the product, you get instant protection. In, in, uh, from attackers trying to get into your, your system. We added a bunch of other capabilities to the system for, for security, but we also worked with the industry, the antivirus vendors, the consultants, to ensure that their products, together with Windows XP, created a holistic experience. We also came up with a new advanced technology that let us scan all the source code in the system to look for potential security issues, and we removed them before we shipped. We also put Windows XP on the internet, and we didn't have a single compromise, and we left it on there for a very, very long time. 
What about usability? Well, the slide says 25% better. This was based on about 100 different usability studies that we did with 100, 1,000 different participants. But I don't think 25% really gets across the importance of what we've accomplished. The failure rate before of doing simple tasks like copying photos to a CD was very high. We show an 80% increase in completion of doing that task in Windows XP. We show a 40% increase in completion of those tasks if you're just trying to take cam uh, pictures from a camera and bringing those into the system. Another area that Windows XP is setting the standard for is deployment. Now, that's something that we've worked on for our PC manufacturers because it takes time for them to load it in their manufacturing facilities, but we've also worked on it for the business space. We have a ministry in British, of British Columbia that's been able to load Windows XP and their applications and deploy them all within 40 minutes. So across the board, we think this is a great solid foundation. Now, Windows 2000 was targeted at the embedded, the enterprise space, high-end users, but it didn't cover the entire gambit. So we only gave users one area of, of the whole spectrum. Now, what we've tried to do in, in Windows XP is cover the entire, entire area. What I want to do is talk about Windows XP being more than just for consumers. Often, that's what people think of, because we, we focus on all the great things that we're doing in digital photography, digital video, music, and the like. But that covering that spectrum means that it has to be great for business, too. And we've had two innovative programs that we've used in the Windows XP program. One is called the Joint Development Partner Program. That's one that we've used for businesses, where we spend time with the businesses, they pre-install it, we test it out in their environments, make sure it does what it is that, um, that they need out of a system. So to sort of give you the idea, the feel of what Windows XP can be for business, I've got a video that I want to run and show what BMW has been doing with Windows XP. We're producing worldwide, we're selling worldwide, and very important, we are sourcing worldwide. BMW is really BMW Group, a global company. We are in the spearhead of technology. Without being that, our product would not be in a prime position in the market. There are a few things why BMW chooses Windows XP. We see more security. We see better support on laptops. It's very reliable and very stable. With Windows XP, offline folders are encrypted on as a local system. If a laptop were stolen or lost, the data cannot be seen. That's a very, very important issue. BMW is thinking about to migrate some CAD applications from Unix workstations to Windows-based platform. The first results shows very good stability. Given the high investment that we have in the infrastructure, our interest is to get the best quality and the best value out of it. So I think Microsoft has done that, setting the standards, getting the hardware industry behind it, and uh, so we get the best output out of it. Today is certainly the benchmark. Here in the audience are representatives from BMW, Michael Ludacha and Michael Schmidt. I'd like them to stand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We had another program which is quite innovative. Instead of just bringing people to Microsoft for usability studies in our labs, we decided to get out of our offices and go to people's homes. So we had a program called Real People, Real Data, where we went to people's homes, understood what they were trying to do, and then tested out our products directly with them. We, in some cases, basically lived with them. We have one of those families here, the Madsen family from Chicago, Beth, Fred, and their son, Jeff, and I'd like them to stand as well. I want to give you an idea how they were using Windows XP. This is the Madsen family PC. And let's look at what Beth does. 
Beth uses her PC a lot of times to, to do a PowerPoint story. In this particular case, it's sort of a funny one. It's about water towers for somebody inside Microsoft. But she's also done serious ones dealing with the tragedy of, of September 11th. Let me switch gears and look at what, how Fred uses the family PC. Fred uses the PC for remote control model airplaning. This is one of Fred's designs that he actually created. And back here he has a web page with the rules and regulations with RC um, planes. Let's look at what Jeff does. Jeff's a guy after my own heart into music. And what Jeff likes to do is using an application that can build grooves and tie them together, a sonic foundry is acid, he can create music and once he's all, he's totally satisfied with it, he can pump it out to Windows Media format and deploy it in the media um, system um, that he has skinned in a very unique way here. So this is an example of how we've gone the gamut from the very high-end 64-bit level system with Windows XP down to what a family in Chicago and how they can use a PC. I want to personally thank all the people who are in the audience today and all the people that are listening for the beta testing and all the feedback. You helped develop this product, and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. So not only does uh, Windows XP represent tremendous opportunities for what users can do at home or in, 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 um, at work, but it also represents amazing opportunities for the PC industry. Since June... Ladies and gentlemen, we're having a small technical problem with our satellite link. We'll be up shortly. Thank you. Number two was compatibility, but we did a really, really amazing job. On the CD, we have 12,000 devices, which I think is phenomenal. And we've got a thousand, thousands more that are going up on Windows Update today and that are available on the Internet. 90% of the, of, of the high-volume applications that have been shipped in the last three, year, three years work great on Windows XP. And we created a new logo program that we encourage customers to look for. Because these applications, these designed for Windows XP uh, logoed applications or devices, we know have a higher level of quality than previous applications. And we've got 3,200 designed for Windows devices and apps today with about 500 coming each week. So incredibly broad industry support. I want to show you some of the different systems that are now shipping from our top uh, partners in this space. I have a whole line here. Up here we have a Compact 1700T system. And down here we have a very cool Evo D500 system. Now this system is unique because it's got the smallest form factor that has a Pentium 4 in it. But it's also cool because it's got ex full ex expandability here in the, in the front of it. So very, very cool. Up here we have a Dell 8100, which is very cool. And down here we have a Dell C400 Latitude. This is a great form factor as well. Very, very fast resume times, which is something that together with our partners we've worked hard on. It's great for mobility. Up here we've got a Gateway Solo 9550, and down here we have a Gateway 700S system. This is a feature-packed consumer system with extreme performance. It supports videoware, and it's great for the digital video experience. Up here we have a HP Pavilion N5475 and an HP Omnibook 500. It's a great form factor as you can see here and it has optional wireless built in which is fantastic and as it's pretty obvious it's going to be great for a mobility experience. Up here we have a ThinkPad T23 and down here we have an all-in-one station for business, the NetVista X41. This is a powerful business 
a desktop, and be, as you can see, this is, a, this is it. This is the whole computer here, very innovative form factor, takes up only 25% of the desk uh, space. In the back here, we have a Sony uh, Vio MX system, and down here we have the smallest compact form factor um, that we've got up here, integrated high-quality camera up here at the top. We've got MPEG-2 video encoding capabilities. It's obviously great for a communication um, system. Back here, a Toshiba Protege 4000. And down here, we have an all-in-one, if you will, satellite system, uh, S504. High-end NVIDIA graphics, high-end audio, fantastic sound from the system. Desktop replacement uh, for consumers. It's also very good for a um, uh, music experience, obviously. Those are systems from our top partners, but I want to make two other points. The first is that Windows XP is a system for all software and hardware vendors. We have a generic PC here, and because Windows XP is designed as a platform first and foremost, you'll see running here uh, Netscape, AOL, Yahoo Messenger, and Real Player. So regardless of the solution, regardless of the PC, Windows XP enhances your experience. The last point I wanted to make in this broad range is that Windows XP comes on machines of all shapes and all sizes. I've got an eMachines 1090 here. This is a Windows XP machine. It's less than $500. Very, very impressive. Well, we have come a long ways. It's been, a, it's been quite a journey. I've been at Microsoft 11 years. I'm super proud of this product. I'm super proud of the team that created it. Customers love Windows XP. My group and Microsoft in general is in the business of creating opportunity. Windows XP represents a land of opportunity. And frankly, that's why this is such a historic moment for us and the industry. Thank you very much. Well, the team worked very hard on this product. I remember last spring sitting down with them and saying, are you guys going to have this ready for this Christmas season? We really need it for this Christmas season, but we don't want to do it unless it's ready to go. And so they put in some really uh, long hours, uh, real dedication to it. Uh, so let's have a, a round of applause for the Windows XP team. <clears throat> a critical aspect of this product is the, what we call, continuous improvement. And this is something that I'm really thrilled about. I think it's something that we needed, uh, but we have not had until Windows XP. It's the idea of a complete feedback loop. You know, how does Microsoft know when somebody wants their PC to do better? How do they know what's going on? How do we know what pieces may not be fitting together in exactly the right way? Well, built into Windows XP is a reporting capability. And so for anybody who allows this to work, we can see every time there's a hang or a crash or a, a serious problem on the PC. And so we have this very comprehensive database that shows us all those things that are going on. Now we take that information, and together with our partners, we say, hey, was this driver solid enough? Was this application working the right way? Was this hardware uh, working the right way? And we make sure that we can feed improvements out to that user base. When we did this in the past, it was way too cumbersome. Uh, people would get too many notices, we didn't have enough up there, we didn't have drivers and the broad set of things people were interested in. So we said we've got to get this to critical mass. We have to have it be common sense that an XP machine, whether it's in a corporation at home, uh, you're getting these regular updates. And so the feature is built in to make that very, very simple. So we won't have to wait for the major releases that come every two or three years uh, in order to see improvements. Simply by having a machine that connects out to the internet, you'll be able to get this continuous improvement. And this is really a, a key answer to the question of how can we have such an open environment? 
where anybody can develop applications and drivers and hardware, and there's nothing that holds back people who want to do those new things. There's no approval process they go through, and yet be sure that the leading companies make absolutely sure that the quality of that experience is such that people aren't concerned, that they're willing to add a new peripheral or a new application knowing their, their system will keep running and, and working for them exactly the way it should. When I talk about partners, uh, we have a lot of partners, uh, but our most critical partner, without a doubt, is Intel. Uh, with Intel, we, wait, we work to make sure that the power of their processors and our software solutions is really enabling new capabilities. We're both companies that believe in a very high volume approach, getting uh, great price performance out into the marketplace. It's exciting that at the same time we're coming out with this new major Windows release, uh, Intel has a, a very important ship uh, that's now going mainstream. So let me invite Craig Barrett, CEO of Intel out, to share his perspective on the XP launch. Welcome. Thank you. So first of all, let me congratulate you, Microsoft, and Jim Olchin on a great accomplishment, the whole Windows XP, the technology behind it to launch, everything is great. All right, I want to tell you, just as a start, I've almost got three generations of of stuff behind this. My grandkids just bought a new PC. Intel inside, surprisingly <laughs> enough. Uh, XP, I've got XP Professional on my desktop, and our IT organization is standardizing on XP Professional for Intel across the board going forward. <laughs> and as you said, I, I really think the, the combination of the Penning 4 processor and XP and the fact that they're really optimized to show off each other's real strength. Uh, brings a lot of excitement as a marketplace going forward and we're just proud to be up here on the stage with you and proud to have our teams working closely together and in fact I think in, in my history of the Intel Microsoft relationship this is probably the closest cooperation best cooperation we've ever had so we're excited about the result excited about going forward now one of the things that I'm not sure that the audience realizes is really how much technology goes behind this and I was sitting in my hotel room last night trying to add up how many man years of effort we put behind designing the Pentium 4 and the manufacturing process technology and getting ready to go. And I, I come up somewhere between probably seven and 10,000 man years. And I suspect you've got an equivalent amount of effort behind it. Almost exactly the same. Uh, it's, you know, the things that we're building collectively, I think, are, are the most complex, sophisticated things that man has ever built. And it's, I get terribly excited looking at the microstructure of our microprocessors. I suspect you get excited looking about those bits and bytes of stuff in the code. But, you bet. <laughs> but you know, that's for us techie nerds to get excited about. By the way, I've got to ask you, how old were you in the Windows 95 launch video? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I was uh, 38. Wow. <laughs> I've aged. <laughs> You've matured. You've matured. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, we get excited about the, uh, the technology, but I think the real excitement is what it brings to the end user. And uh, I think you, you and the team have done a very good job demonstrating the audience that if you're a consumer and it's the rich audio, digital video, entertainment, rich communication, imaging, animation, all of that good stuff, plus better reliability. And then in the business space, it's everything from multiprocessor or, or multitasking capability and security, uh, the short messaging system with the video conferencing little window. I love that aspect of it. Uh, there's games, and uh, uh, I know none of you play games ever at work, but mm -hmm. it is really, if you take a Pentium 4 and XP in games, and the animation is truly amazing. So I, I want everybody to recognize not so much all the detailed technology behind it, but the great user experience it, it brings forward. And I think that's really the accomplishment that Microsoft is presenting to the world today. So let me offer Intel's congratulations. Looking forward to continue to work with you guys. Great accomplishment. Thank you. Thanks for your support. Many people, as we've talked about the enthusiasm of these beta users, where 
They literally say they're never going back to a previous version of Windows. They've asked us to dimensionalize this. And if you simply look at doing the things you were doing before, uh, the time savings are, are quite considerable. Uh, always on capability, uh, the quick coming out of standby capability, uh, the reduction uh, in, in crashes, uh, just the basic speed that we have in everything that, that goes on with the operating system, and the fact that things are more accessible. Uh, you can see what's going on. You can control that in phase just in a, in a far better way. If you've ever got a question, this support capability where you can just connect up, it's pretty clear to us that a Windows user over the course of a year is going to save themselves a man week uh, because of these new capabilities. And that's simply taking the things they're doing now and being able to do those uh, in a better way. So reasonably dramatic. It just shows the leverage that comes when we spend the billions of dollars and put the product out as a uh, high volume, low price product. Now on top of that savings comes uh, the ability to do the new things. And I wanted to make it clear what some of those categories of new things are. Uh, you're going to see a lot today about real-time communications. This is not just instant messaging, because when people think about that, they think about text. Uh, what, we, uh, what we have here is the extension to audio and video as well. Uh, perhaps even more profound is this screen sharing. You know, whenever you're on the phone with somebody, you want to talk about a list or a schedule or a presentation or a budget. Well now, uh, people will do that. This kind of net meeting capability was so hard to get at Windows that it was almost like a cult feature. And now we brought it to the mainstream and we expect most people to use that. Mobile computing. Uh, on an ongoing basis, you're going to hear about how our industry is driving Wi-Fi or 802.11b into mainstream usage. Uh, that is a very big thing uh, for the new scenarios. And XP brings that forward. If you have an XP machine, there's many locations now where automatically you'll see the network come up and just offer uh, to connect you up and connect you up with security. Help and support, a huge overhead thing. And now the diagnostics built in and the screen sharing thing uh, allow those to be handled in a, in a very different way. The common sense of digital photography. Why haven't people switched away from film? Well, the cameras are certainly getting there, the cost, the resolution, uh, the printers, but it's just the, the setup. How do you move the photos? How do you keep the names? How do you make sure you don't lose them? How do you organize them? That's what we put so much work into. Likewise, digital music. Uh, the user is empowered by organizing things the way they want, and yet uh, it, it hasn't reached critical mass because uh, the tools simply weren't built in in the right way. Digital video coming along with the, the great camcorders, the low cost of storage. And finally, home networking. Again, something that a few people were able to set up in the past. Now, uh, it's something that's a mainstream thing. You get two PCs, they'll recognize they're, they're together, be able to set up and, and gateway through to the internet in a simple way. So those were some of the key scenarios that we really put new technology in took it out to the users to make sure uh, that this would be something that everyone could take advantage of. Uh, so, you know, XP is about hundreds of millions of people uh, doing these things. We thought a lot about, you know, how could we bring this home? How could we bring, bring someone who clearly wasn't, uh, you know, an engineer and, uh, you know, really people could relate to in a big way? And we thought, who's got the energy and the excitement? Who's sort of a consummate New Yorker uh, who can you know, be a, a good example of someone we can bring in with, with Windows XP? Uh, and so we've got somebody fantastic uh, for that. Please uh, welcome Mr. Regis Philbin. Yes. Hi, everybody. Hello, Bill. Hi. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Welcome. Thank you. You know, I'm excited to be here, but I've got to tell you something. I am your greatest challenge. Uh-oh. Yeah. I've talked about this on the show. I've tried so many times to conquer this, to get into it, to be a part of, uh, you know, the, the century. And I can't do it. It just doesn't work for me. There's too many things to press. There's too much to remember. I give up. Well, 
That's why we need you here. We've got to prove that Windows XP is for everyone. Well, I see it all around me, my staff, my family. Everybody can do it. You can't do it. Well, Reed, just... Incidentally, you, you... why am I the only guy here with a tire? <laughs> Regis, you can do it. I'll answer any questions that you have. I've got a lot of questions, a lot of questions. But, you know, I'd feel more more familiar uh, with these questions if I was in more familiar surroundings. So would you step into my office right okay. over here, Bill Gates? Uh, yeah, here it goes. Yes, Bill Gates! Who wants to be a millionaire? Bill Gates does! There we go. Uh, well, you know, Regis, I've, I've always wanted to be on your show. <laughs> yeah, if anybody needs a million, it's you. But, uh... uh Weren't you, uh, were you on my show yesterday? Well, that was Kelly's show, wasn't it? Easy, Bill, easy. <laughs> easy on the funny stuff. You mean my other show, you mean the millionaire show. We'd love to have you on that show. All right. Yeah, who wants right. to be a millionaire? Bill Gates does. <laughs> you think it's worth your time? Well, I don't know. <laughs> It'd be fun. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. If you could get past the fastest finger question. Oh, you know, I can do it. I can do it. Sure you can. All right, let's, let's start with some easy XP Windows questions, okay? See how much you really know about this product. Here we go. First question, coming up. Bill Gates, what does the XP in Windows XP stand for? Is it extreme power, expediency, experience, supercalifragilistic XP allidocious? <laughs> Well, that's a pretty easy one. I, I think I'll go with C. Experience. You say experience, final answer? Final answer. All right. And you're right, Bill Gates, you just won $100. Experience, the right answer. All right, we'll get another question up here. Which of these is not, not a Windows XP experience? Would it be digital music, mobility, Digital photography. New billionaire game that replaces solitaire. Well, we may have missed an opportunity, but uh, I think it's B. <laughs> uh, you're right again, Bill Gates. How about that? $200. Very good. All right, we'll get into a tough question. Here it comes. Windows XP allows you to use your computer to... Play videos, music, and view pictures. Call and see friends in real time. Connect to your work from anywhere. Get the best of the digital world, even if you're not an expert. Well, that's an interesting one. I'd, I'd say it's actually all of the above. All of the above. Final answer. That's it. Got it, Bill Gates. It really happened to you. Yes, you win. But let me ask you something, Bill. Can it really do all these things? Well, it really does. Uh, and, you know, we're going to make it so even a guy like you can do every one of those things. You know, I, I'm a kind of a bright guy, but I just, okay, there's just something about it that baffles me. Well, we've got Joe Belfiore here, and he's going to come out and show you how you do it with Windows XP. Okay. Actually, while Joe's out here, I'm going to go out into Times Square. You're going to go to Times Square? Yeah, I'm just going to go out there Can and look around. you imagine this? Uh, don't worry, I'll be checking back in with you to make sure Joe's taking care of you. Bill Gates loose in Times Square. All right. It's going to Bill, be okay. Uh, Bill, I brought a, a jacket for you here from folks in the team. Uh, we All thought right. you'd need that out there in Times Square. New Windows XP jacket. That's what Bill needs. It's 84 degrees out there. I'll be a real hit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good okay, luck, Bill, you guys. Okay, Bill, thanks very much. Good luck out there. <laughs> nice to see you, Bill. All right. There's a lot of great people out there, you know. I hope he's going to be all right. I trust he knows his way around Times Square, Joe. You know, there's shell games, there's naked cowboys, there's <laughs> hot dog vendors with XP windows on the umbrellas. There's all kinds of things out there. But there are many chief architect software 
engineers up. Yeah, you're right, Regis, but I'll tell you what, I think Bill's going to be okay, okay, so we'll check in and, and make sure he does fine. All right. So why don't we uh, walk over here and get started, and I'll start showing okay, you good. Windows XP. Do any of these guys own a tie? That's all I want to know. <laughs> Can't believe it. So, uh, oh, yeah. is this the latest model? This is a Dell Latitude C600 laptop. Okay. And the first thing we're going to talk about, we're going to go through some of the experiences. The first one we're going to talk about is mobility and how Windows XP can really let you take your computing experiences with you. Windows XP is the engine inside this computer, this, right? This computer comes with Windows XP. Okay. And well, the first thing, actually, I, I, I saw on your show, you, you had Bill on your show, and you yes. mentioned that sometimes you've had some trouble actually just turning computers on. Exactly. All you need is an on and off button, and I'll be able to follow it. Well, fortunately, this laptop actually has one right there. And we thought it would be a great way to start out with Regis by letting him turn the PC on. He could start learning, and all of you could see just how fast Windows XP is. It so doesn't say on. It's got a little symbol, but that's the button, right? Yep, there you go. Here Give you it go. a push. And that's it? It's on? That's it. And there's it's Windows It's on. XP. Okay. All right? Great. Good so, beginning. We're off to a good start so far here. You're doing great. Uh, so Windows XP does make turning the PC on a lot quicker. And there's a lot of other things we've done to make mobility work great. But one of the things that I want to focus on, since we don't have time to go through all the features, is wireless networking. So with wireless networking, you can buy a laptop, and Dell and other PC manufacturers make laptops that have it built in. Right. But lots of people have laptops like this that don't have wireless networking built in. So what you can do is you can buy little wireless networking cards like this one. Uh -huh. This is an Orinoco wireless networking card from Agir. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do, Regis, I'm going to actually have you install wireless networking support on this laptop. This makes this computer uh, uh, usable without any wires. Exactly. Okay. You'll be able to get on the internet, do your email, do all that stuff. We thought, you know, with Regis being new to all this, it would be great to start him out with something as easy as installing hardware. And every computer has that little slot? All laptops have that little okay. slot, so you can buy stuff like this from lots of companies. All right. And we're going to go through all the steps to install, configure, and connect to a wireless network. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and uh, give the card a push. push. There. And just watch on the screen here as Windows XP recognizes that you just inserted some hardware, and it's doing all the hard work of figuring out how to install the software required find the wireless network, and get you connected. All right. So little balloons are popping up. Little here. balloons are popping up. It's thinking, and there we go. Is installed, ready to use. Good. And that's it. And that's it. The hardware right, is fine. installed and ready to use. I still see wires here. Well, these wires are actually wires that we're using to power the laptop and to get the picture up on the screen to get some audio out. Oh, OK. OK, so we've now got, we've now got our, our wireless uh, network installed here. And you can see there's a balloon that says there's wireless networks right here in the theater. Who would have guessed a wireless network in the theater? So it has to be in a place where there are wireless network connections. You got it, exactly. And so what we can do is we can just click on the balloon here to see the wireless networks. And in fact, we've set up more than one wireless network here in the theater. So out there in the partner area, people can do wireless. Up here mm -hmm. on stage, you and I can do wireless. Okay. And I'm just going to click OK or hit Enter to connect to so what this did you wireless hit? network. What, what, what did you hit? I, I hit the Enter key, but I could have so, so far, three on. moves. I hit this, I push this, and I hit enter. You got it. That's it. Piece of cake. And right up there on the screen, it says, we are now connected to the backstage network, and our connection is excellent. So this p PC right now is actually connected. And to show that to you, I'm going to go over here to the Start button. The start button is the one place that you click on to find all your programs and anything you want to do. I'm going to open the internet using Internet Explorer right here. And we'll actually have a web browser. We'll be connected to the network. And what we're looking at is a web page that we have on a server backstage. Uh -huh. And we could browse around on the internet and do anything we wanted. Okay. So the second thing that's really cool about wireless networks is that they're very fast. And to show you just how quick they are, I'm going to click on this music link and download a song and have it play over the PC. Music files are kind of big, and it shows how fast a wireless network is. So we click, and there's the music. <clears throat> wow, that was quick. Simple as that. That was quick. So not only is it easy for you to set up a wireless uh -huh. network, hopefully you'll decide that you can do it, but it's also really fast once you've got it set up. Uh, you did mention a key point, Reg, which is that for wireless networking, there has to be an antenna, or you have to have your PC in a place where a wireless right. network has installed. And I thought it would be cool to show you a little bit about what my wireless day is like when I take my laptop and go to all these places. Okay. So let's actually, uh, I'm going to unplug this. I'll yank the screen, right. yank the power. Yank the audio. I'm going to lift this puppy right up. 
And uh, I want you to join me on a little imaginary walk through my wireless day. Okay. Where are, we, where are we going? Okay, this well, way? in fact, let's take a look back here. We're oh, yeah. going to start at home. Okay, yeah. So step on over here. So you can work it at home in, in without fact, any wire. I can and I do. I have a wireless network in my house, and all I have to do is turn on my laptop or plug in the card. A little balloon pops up on the screen, like the one you see there, mm -hmm. telling me that I'm now connected to my home wireless network. Lots of companies mm -hmm. are building accessories that let you connect to a wireless network in your house. How did you make that? You just buy that and you, you put just, it in your house? Exactly. You okay. buy that, you connect it to the internet, you have a little wireless card like this, turn on your laptop with Windows XP, you're good to go. Right. And then you can browse the web, play online games, do all kinds of stuff. My wife and I like to sit in front of the TV on Sundays with our laptops and update our fantasy football scores to see how we're doing. Sounds exciting. Exactly. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Yeah. Um, Another place where wireless networking is becoming really popular is at work, in the office. Mm -hmm. I take my laptop to the office a bunch, and all I have to do is turn it on. Um, I could be in a conference room, I could be in the cafeteria. And most offices are uh, set up for wireless. Many, right? many yeah. actually are. Um, in fact, we did a survey recently, 70% of CIOs of large companies say they are currently testing wireless networks at their businesses now. That would uh, speed up everything in the business, wouldn't it? That, that's the idea. Yeah. So people could take their laptops and work in the cafeteria, or if you're stuck in a meeting that's not the most productive meeting in the yeah. world, you can get some other work done. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, another great place where wireless networking can really provide benefits to people and where it's taking off. I see them all the time. In airports? You got it. Yeah. So you go to an airport. Um, I could take my laptop to an airport. In fact, on the way here, I did this at Seattle Airport where there's wireless networking. I turn it on, and sure enough, at the airport, I'll get a little balloon like that telling me if there's a wireless network. If there is, like in this case, I can click on that, see a list of available networks, and companies like Wayport are actually installing this service in lots of airports today. So people can go, they pay a small fee just to get online, and then while they're waiting for their flight, they can be doing their email, on the web, mm. all kinds of stuff like what that. What about on the flight, Joe? Uh, not yet? Not yet, but I'm sure we'll get there yeah. soon. Okay. Um, one cool thing, by the way, Wayport is one of these companies that's got this support in airports. Wayport has announced that for all Windows XP customers, starting today until the end of January, that Wayport wireless service will be free if you're using Windows XP. No kidding. So that's, that's kind of cool. That's nice. Good. The last, place, the last place where we're seeing wireless networking really, really start to take off is in hotels. I can take my laptop to a hotel, I turn it on. Whether I'm in my room, I'm in the lobby, I'm in the coffee shop, I'll see one of these little balloons that tells me a wireless network is there. I can connect to it. I can then browse the web, do my email, all that same sort of stuff. If you don't see the balloon, it's not going to work. If you don't see the balloon, then you're not in a place with a wireless right. network. But a key thing is that these wireless networks are happening in lots and lots of places. Mm -hmm. So more and more, you'll be able to go somewhere and do wireless networking. Terrific. And in fact, Reed, we're going to make sure that you can do it and all of you folks in the audience can do it because the folks from Agear have provided these wireless cards free for all of you and for you. Not so you bad. can go try this stuff yourself with Windows XP. Great. That's a great idea. All right. So that's wireless and mobility. Thanks. I think, uh, I think Bill has probably made it to... Are we going to some... check in with him? We should check in with him. I, I hope think. he's there safe and sound. Bill Gates in Times Square. Hi. There I'm he is. here at the Starbucks in Times Square. Let's go see what's happening inside. I'll take an iced decaf, triple venti, skim, light on the ice, latte. Next. Hi. I'll take an 11 megabit, 802.11, with a dynamic IP connection. And uh, I'll have a beverage with it, too. Oh, your network's up, and here's a drink, sir. Wow. That's a strong double mocha. Sir, that's hot chocolate. Wireless network. Outstanding. Dude, isn't it complicated to go wireless? No, it's a snap. You'll be on the web faster than the Yankees beat the Mariners. <laughs> Their cod. Very catchy. Uh, excuse me, I've got a Windows Messenger request. Hi, Bill. Howard Schultz. What a coincidence. I'm in a Starbucks right now. The wireless network you're testing in here is great. It's Howard Schultz. He's the head of Starbucks. Hey, they're talking on the internet. By this time next year, Starbucks is planning to offer customers high-speed wireless internet access in many of our stores across the country. Terrific. Windows XP will be a big help for that. 
It's so fast I was surfing before I was sipping. Absolutely. We're also planning to use Windows XP with compact technologies in our stores. We're also going with Windows XP in our enterprise. Thanks a lot, Howard. Have a great launch. Next time the coffee's on me. Well, hot chocolate. Did that guy say something about free coffee? Joe, Regis, back to you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bill. Ed Koch. Anyway, they're smart people, these Starbucks uh, folks. They're everywhere. They sell their double uh, decaf lattes and Oprah book CDs, everything, and now they're wireless, too. You got it. And wireless really is one of the cool things about Windows XP, but what we want to talk about now and why we're here mm -hmm. is to talk about digital media. Yeah, what exactly is that? Well, digital media is the idea that you could take pictures or music or videos or all kinds of content, stuff like this, the way it is today, yeah. and put it on your PC and then be able to deal with it easily and do lots of great stuff you, with you it. You can condense all of these CDs on your PC. Not only all of these CDs, but all of these pictures. I have a box like this at my house, tons yeah, of pictures. Everybody's got these and, and these videotapes. I've yeah. been trying to record all your shows, actually. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you and your wife can have a ball on Monday night, too. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now where do we go? Okay, so let's go over here. Let's go over here. Come on, step right up here, and we'll, we'll take a look at uh, photos. So what we have, this is a HP Pavilion PC. And see that box of pictures there? That's got yeah. about 2,000 pictures. Right. In. We have all of those pictures on this PC. How'd they get there? Well, it's actually pretty easy with Windows XP. For one thing, you could use a digital camera to take them. You connect it with a wire. Windows XP recognizes it and copies the pictures to your PC. Or you could use a scanner to take pictures like that, scan them in, and have them on your PC. But then how do you know which picture comes up after the next one? Well, let's take a look, actually. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll give you a quick look. Now, again, to do this, I just have to go to the Start button, Place to Start Stuff. And one of the things on here is My Pictures. That's the My Pictures folder where all of these pictures wow. have been stored. Mm -hmm. And you can see I have tons and tons of them, and they're categorized in little folders. Every time I take my digital camera and plug it in, I type in a name, and they all go together. So if I want to expand one or enlarge it, okay, I can do that? Let, let's try it. Um, we have a folder full of pictures here that were taken for a photo event that Hewlett Packard did, where they gave digital cameras to a bunch of folks from age of 6 to 64 mm -hmm. who weren't experts with them, and they went around the city and took pictures. Central so, Park. You got it. So uh, I can flip through these pictures using Windows XP's film strip view, and I can see them right here on the screen. And there's actually lots and lots of great stuff I can do with them once I have can them Can I here. print these pictures out? Well, thanks for the segue, actually. In fact, you can. Um, if you look right over here... <laughs> If you look right over here on the picture tasks, there's lots of things that we make it easy for you to do with pictures, mm -hmm. like view them as a slideshow, yeah. or you asked about printing. Yeah. I can click print this picture and print it on my own printer, or I can order prints online. And a company like Kodak or Shutterfly will provide the service for me to actually get those prints in you the mail. order it online and it comes to you. And it comes mail. to you. In fact, I want to show you an example. We have here a... One of the things that digital photography has finally caught up with film photography in is the quality of the photos. There's a Sony camera out there that's a five megapixel camera. And with that Sony camera, you can take pictures and blow them up to this size, and they actually still look great. That's it's, great. It's, it's fine enough definition that you probably be, would be willing to hang it on the wall. Absolutely. If you knew who this person was. You can was. get it that big, too. <laughs> you, you can, exactly. In fact, this was printed by someone from the development team, and I'm sure that, that's their kid. But you need this. Um, all, the, all the pictures are on that computer, okay. and then you can print, order prints, and so on. But, in fact, that's not all you can do. Um, as I'm showing you these tasks here, one of the other things that a lot of people want to do is share their pictures with other folks. Yes. So I have family who live in Florida. Um, if I want to share pictures, I can email them. So here's a picture, and if I want to email this, I just click on email. Now, actually, people can do a lot of this stuff today. But, but what, it comes out a little grainy. I've seen yeah, some of them. Yeah, it, it can come out strange. It could be a picture that's really big. And in fact, that's what I wanted to show here. This picture is 2.25 megabytes. Mm -hmm. And that's actually pretty big. It wouldn't even fit on a floppy disk, just that one picture. And that's how the quality is so high. If I were to send that to my sister, who has a modem, it would really take her a very long time to download it. It wouldn't be very considerate of me to do that. But what Windows XP does, so that you don't have to know all this, yeah. if you were to use the PC, for example, and click email this file, Windows XP will detect that the picture is really big and automatically offer to make it smaller for you. And then you just click OK, and then you'll get your email message. You type in the name of the person you want to send it to, and off goes the email. And it shows up on 
on their computer. It'll show up on their computer. And you see right here, this picture is now really small, only 63K. It's yeah. a very small size, but when I open it up, it still looks really nice. So the mm. person on the other end can see the picture. It's fabulous. So there's lots of ways you can share pictures. You can send email. Perfect. One of the things that I also did was I burned a bunch of pictures on this CD. Windows XP supports the ability to write CDs. So actually, the truth is you can fit that many pictures on a CD. And then they play the CD and they see all the pictures they on their computer. They play the CD, you got it. Or I could store it away in case I wanted to make sure I didn't ever lose them. There's lots of great stuff I can do. It's terrific. George. All right, you get yep. the idea. Okay. Let's move on and talk about music. Over here we have a Sony Bio MX. Um, this is a Sony PC that comes with Windows XP. And I want to show you some of the cool stuff that you can do with music. Um, I'm going to go right over here and open the My Music folder. And in fact, all of those CDs, that's 2,000 CDs, we have stored on this computer right here. Just like the pictures are stored on this one. Exactly. Okay. Uh, in fact, there's room on the PC to put even all the CDs and all the pictures. No kidding. Yeah, so you can get all that stuff on there. You know, you think about using audio CDs today. They're great, but if you lose one, then you don't have it anymore. If it gets yeah, all scratched sure. up, sure. this way you can keep all your music safe and together in one place. And how's the sound quality? Good. Sound quality is great, and I'll show you in a second. <clears throat> so if you see, I can scroll through the My Music folder and see all my digital music files. I have tons and tons of them in here. I'm, I'm, I've just scrolled along. I'm barely through the Bs. Um, I'm a Billy Joel fan, uh, local guy. So let me go in there, and I'll show you. I have a bunch of Billy Joel albums here. Okay. And if I want to do something with the music, listen to it or whatever. You just I keep can, hitting that little mouse, and all of these things happen. Huh? I just double-click the button, go in, and there I am. So Windows XP makes it easier for you to deal with all these music right. files. Once you put the CD in, copy them to your hard disk, um, it can tell you who the artist is, how long the song is, and so on. And if I want to play the music, I can just select a song, go over here, and choose Play. And that song will be selected, along with the rest of the content of the album. In Media Player, will come up here, and we're listening to some classic, appropriate Billy Joel. Wow, fantastic. And that's 2,000 albums at least, huh? On, on this PC. On CDs, yeah. Yep. Okay, so this is Windows Media Player. I want to show you a little bit about it. It's been updated for Windows XP to make playing and dealing with music really effortless for people. So you see I have my playlist here, my album art. Um, the Media Player also makes it possible for me to deal with all that music. So if I go into the, my media library, I can look at it in different ways. I can look at it, for example, by album. The list you saw before was all by artists. They're artist. all listed there, huh? They're all here. And so who did that? You know, I, we, we pay these folks a bunch of money to stick the CDs in, get all the music on here, and we're ready for the demo. Okay, good. But you might imagine if you have your own music collection, you'll mm -hmm. take one CD, stick it in, listen to it, it'll be copied to the hard disk. Later, you'll stick another CD, listen to it, right. and it all happens pretty automatically. Um, now, I have all that music in there. I can look at it by artist, by album, and I can create playlists, which are my own sort of customized set of music that all go together. And you'll rearrange it I can arrange it in whatever order I want, have as many songs as I want. Fantastic. And you got to remember the cool thing here is that once you have this digital media on your PC, one of the great things is that you can do a bunch of stuff with it. Yeah. Okay? So for example, I uh, created this audio CD, Joe's Road Trip Classics, which are a bunch of songs that I like to listen to when I'm driving on the road. Mm. And I can also take the music with me by putting it on a portable digital music player. So right here we have a whole bunch of examples of portable digital music players being made by lots of companies to provide Windows XP users with music wherever they want to go. All of these music players work with Windows XP today. Mm. So once you have the music, you can do lots of great stuff with it. And how? What do you think? I think it's great. And you've got every artist ever? Uh, <coughs> well, we have a lot. There's, mm. there's 2,000 in here right yeah. now. Yeah, fabulous. In fact, you, you, one of the things that some people say when I show this is that I go into this list and it's a little on the long side. You know, if I, if I have to find a particular album in there, you've got to scroll through all this. And if I let you use it for a while, you might find that kind of inconvenient. Yeah. And, and in fact, I heard on your show that you mentioned to Bill that you'd like to be able to talk to computers. That might That's be the answer. That's the final answer. Just talk to the thing, you know, and let it do the work. Forget the mouse, forget pressing buttons talk to it. Okay, well, we're going to try to stay focused on that for a second. I want to show you a feature. We're going to, so we're going to try to deliver on that promise. With, with Plus for Windows XP, Microsoft Plus for Windows XP, what Plus does is it extends the digital media experience, makes your PC more fun to use. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open Plus and show you one of the things that we've done to start making that a reality. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, Plus has a bunch of stuff, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the voice command for Windows Media Player. And what that does is it enables me to actually talk to the computer and ask for my music. 
So watch this. Media player, play artist Lenny Kravitz. I think I, I spoke too soon. It wasn't quite ready, so I'll try it again. Media player, play artist Lenny Kravitz. This better work. I don't hear Lenny. I don't hear Lenny yet either. We'll try oh, it one more Lenny. time. Maybe Lenny's not in there. Sometimes we have trouble with the mics being hooked up yeah, here. Right, Joe, sure. <laughs> See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Here's a professional, Lenny Kravitz, please. Nothing. Give it, a, give it another shot. I think it has to be a little quieter in here for me to do that. Okay. Okay. Media player, play artist, Lenny Kravitz. All right. And you got him. Uh -huh. That's it. <laughs> now you're showing me something, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, Thank now you. I like it. Yeah, we, we, we thought this is a, not, it's a cool and useful feature. Can it's, you narrow it down, Joe, to the song you want to hear by Lenny? Or you can it, ask for genre, song. There's a lot out of those 2,000 CDs, out of the million songs on them, you can narrow it down. Yeah. That's fabulous. In fact, I have a, we have a little surprise for you, Reg. What do you got? Watch this. Media player, play artist, Regis Philbin. Oh, I like him. <laughs> Big hit, this album. <laughs> oh, I love that song. <laughs> Who needs Lenny Kravitz? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you get the idea um, how, how digital media and music makes all this stuff possible. It's incredible. It really is. And uh, I'm just going to exit out of this. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is video. Because with digital media, you know, there's photos, there's music, and now there's video. We have a Sony camcorder here. I'm just going to turn it on and connect it to the PC. And the Windows XP PC will recognize that I just attached a device. We're connecting this to that. PC. Exactly. Okay. Um, I could have attached a regular camera. And what Windows would do is it would prompt and say, well, what do you want to do? You just plugged in a camera. Okay. What do you want to do? And it gives you a list of choices. Um, I can record video using Windows Movie Maker. I can edit and record video using Adobe Premiere, software that's created by Adobe. I can capture and record DV Movie, the, the digital video, using Sony's DV Gate Motion, which comes on this PC. So mm -hmm. I have a range of choices, and lots of companies are providing those services. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Windows Movie Maker, because I want to show you what comes with Windows XP. These are the movies you make. Exactly. Okay. So what I've done, actually, um, just for expediency, rather than capturing all the video here, I, uh, I captured the video earlier, and I started working on a little video project of my own. I want to show this to you, and I'm just going to finish it. So these are clips that I played from the camera into the computer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab one more clip here. You're going to do editing right here? I'm editing right now. I just dropped the clip in, and we have some Lenny Kravitz. You know, we Again, thought about, Kravitz? We thought about putting Regis in here, but somehow we oh, didn't think right. it would fit with the theme of this I know my uh, place. video. Okay. Um, so now I've done my little editing, and then if I want to see it on the computer, I can just click play right here and watch the video on the computer. So now you're adding the music to your... I just added the music. Fabulous. This is a nice summer day in Seattle. Yeah, you can... You're your own movie producer, director, and editor. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, very It's good. possible with, uh, with Movie Maker that's part of Windows XP and with some of the stuff that other folks are doing. So what I can do is I can create that little movie. But again, remember, it's what you can do with the stuff once you have it. Sure. I can save it to my hard disk and keep it. I could put it on a CD. I could send it to my friends or family by email. It would automatically make it small and send it out so other people could watch. But what I want to show, actually, is a really cool thing that uh, a different company has provided, which is the ability to create DVDs. So this VIO computer actually comes with a writable DVD drive. And a company called Sonic has an application that can create DVDs. What we did uh, before the show today was we took that same video and actually burned a DVD. And over here I have a Sony consumer DVD player, just like DVD players that lots mm -hmm. of people have. And I can stick the DVD in the drive. You might imagine I sent the video to my family or to my friends. I can, they can take it home, I click play, and voila, they're able to watch my edited video on a DVD. Wow. You, can you transfer that from PC to PC, or you have to mail it to them? I could mail it to them, I could hand it to them. Uh -huh. If I thought I was a really great filmmaker, I could put my DVDs in stores and try to sell them. Families are going to love that. All right. So, so that's video. That's pretty good, Joe. Thanks. Awfully good. It's and incredible, it really is. There's one more thing that we want to show related to digital media. Now, as Jim and Bill said, 
Windows XP includes experiences that are part of Windows XP, but it's also really important that other companies can create and build even new experiences that are not things that we worked on. So I want to show an example of that. There's a company called Snapstream that has created a product called Personal Video Station. And what they're doing is taking advantage of features built into the Windows XP platform to create this program that lets you use your PC like a fancy VCR. Mm. You plug your cable TV in, and then it can record TV shows, uh, and you can do all kinds of stuff with those TV shows once you recorded them. And the Windows XP platform makes that pretty easy for these folks to do. So here we are. To record a show, I just go click on the record function here. And you see this is a program guide from local New York shows here. This is what you'd see if you had this PC at your uh -huh. house. You know, if you see any shows on here that you think would be good ones for me to record, let me know. Any so ideas? I love that who wants to be a millionaire show. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, so I can just click right on that, mm -hmm. and I can record it. You know, I can record it once. I can record it weekly. Whenever it comes up, you'll record it. Yeah. In fact, since you're here, I'll record it daily. Um, I just click on that, and the application shows me that it's now added to my scheduled recording list. Mm -hmm. So now the PC is going to automatically record the show whenever it finds it. Okay. Is it one show per PC? Um, you can store lots of shows okay. on the PC. And in fact, I'm going to go over here to the watch function, and this is how I watch TV shows. All of these TV shows have been recorded. So if I want to watch your show, let's see how you did that day, I'll click the play button, the TV show comes up in Windows Media Player here, and I can go to full screen mode and use my PC just like a TV. Boy, the quality is fantastic, isn't it? Do you mean the quality of the show? or No, a... I mean of the, <laughs> of the picture I'm seeing. <laughs> I mean, it's really great. Oh, well, it's we terrific. think it is, too. And that's, that's what these folks oh, are able nice to do. He's a nice-looking guy, yeah. That's what, that's what these folks are able to do with the Windows Media Technologies that are part of Windows XP. And so, only on XP Windows can you get all this. You can do some of this stuff with other PCs, but Windows XP pulls these experiences together in a way that makes it really yeah. easy for people to use and adds new features and functionality to people writing applications. Now, I want to show you one more thing in digital media. Whoa, yikes. You go down, Joe, we're dead, you know. <laughs> come, on, come on around here. Um, like I've been saying, one of the great things about digital media is what you can do oh, yeah, with the content once you have it. So we have a compact pocket PC right here. This is an ordinary pocket PC people can buy today. And what you can do with Windows XP and the Snapstream software is actually take those TV shows and move them onto your pocket PC or your laptop so you can take them with you. If you want to put your kids in, in the car and give them something to watch, or if you want to have something with you on the plane. How many can you take on that? It depends how much memory you have. But you right. can buy little cards that extend the memory and okay. keep a bunch of shows on there. So if I want to watch your show, when I'm on the plane, I just click the link, and right there, Again. I got TV it's everywhere. in the palm yeah. of my hand. Okay. I tell you, you know, you boggle the mind. I just hope I can remember all this when I get home. I'm sure I will. <laughs> What's next? Okay, well, that is the digital video. Incidentally, where's the big boy? Music. Where is he? You know, I think he's out there in Times Square. Still and, in Times Square? I hope, he's, hope he's all right. Well, we should probably check in and see what's up with him now. So, Bill, are you there? Bill? We're here at the Virgin Store in Times Square. Let's go see what's happening. Great. I think I'm going to ask the expert a question about what to get my executive committee for their stocking stuffers. Hey, Bill, I know some people say you put the square in Times Square, but if you're looking for a rockin' holiday season, try any of these. Hey, thanks. My pleasure. Pretty amazing they got Casey Kasem to do that. Hey, buddy, you're going to be done with this XP workstation anytime soon. Hey, this is really cool. We've got XP delivering 250,000 music clips, 11,000 DVD previews, and 7,000 video games. It's a Great use of the media technology in XP. Nice haircut. Hey, what kind of music do you like? The Ray Prince of Pop. What else? Well, what do you got? Let me look at that. Hey, the classics never go out of style. I've got one more stop to make. Back to you, Joan Regis. Well, those guys have great taste in music, don't they? Actually, it was the guy with the tattoos who wanted to hear me again. So, 
This is a little video machine here, the video thing I'm hearing about where you could talk to someone and see them at the same time. You got they it. They see you. You got it. Can real so, people do this too? Yep, and, and you're going to do it now. Okay. Okay, so what we have here is a compact Evo laptop, and we're going to talk about real-time communications and how Windows XP lets you communicate with people in real time. Okay. So this is an inexpensive webcam, and this is Windows Messenger. And I'm just going to get you started here. Um, we created an account for you. This is your account. We put some buddies in there. These are the people that you might want to communicate with frequently. And in fact, I see. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Um, Bill is one of them, and he's online right now. Good. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to double click on Bill, and here we have a conversation window. We can have a conversation with Bill. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can communicate. In fact, you see, Bill just typed, "Hey Regis." So if you want to communicate with him by typing. Yeah, but I can't type. Um, Okay, I got this. How about this? Hi, Bill. There you go. Is it easy to just make a phone call? It, well, you know, in fact, since you're, uh, since you're a guy who's, out. there you go, since you're a guy who's really more into talking. Yeah, I want and, to talk. Well, let's just do that. Yeah. So rather than messing with this typing thing, if it's not what you're comfortable with, then all we have to do is move the mouse over here and click start talking. And what we've done is just like a phone call. We've asked Bill if he wants to talk to us, so imagine his phone is ringing. And on his end, all he has to do is click accept to accept the call. And he's got one of these set up wherever he is. He's got a microphone where he is. So in fact, he accepted. So you should be able to talk he to him now. Try it. Hello, Bill. Bill? Hi, Bill. How you doing? I'm doing great out here. Everybody loves me. Oh, you're out of Times Square, but I can't see him. Where is he? Well, good question. So if you want to do that, just why don't you move the mouse up there and click Start Camera. Down, yeah, start right. Start Camera right up there? Up a little bit. Yeah. Right there. Okay, uh, now here's where you got... Right there. You got it. And so now you've asked Bill. Hang on, Bill. I'm getting, I'm getting you on... Uh... Bridget, can you see me? Not yet. He'll, he'll be popping in here. Hello, Bill. <laughs> is he going to come on soon? Well, his, he might be having trouble with his camera. See he what is... I mean? Every... Damn time I do this. <laughs> These guys have spent millions of dollars putting this together. I just screwed up the whole presentation. Let's, it doesn't work for me. It, it's not you. I'm sure it's the fact that we have this extensive staging here. What we're well, going to do? Maybe Bill's doing something wrong. It, you ever look at it that way? It could be. I'm going to try stopping the camera and starting again. Okay. He's out there literally on the street. It's and like it's letting possible all over that his, It's okay. possible that his camera is not plugged in or not quite working right. Tell me when to press the mouse. Now, he's, he should be getting his, his request there. Let's see if his camera comes in. L little picture. Well, that's me. That's you? OK, well, unfortunately, it looks like Bill, Bill's camera is not working. Do you understand? I understand. Do you understand what the problems are here? I understand. So what happened? Oh, actually, good news. What did he say? Bill's assistant is out there with a backup machine I'll talk camera. to anybody. <clears throat> so let's try that. Get me a Koch back. We don't care. We're going to go here and do start camera and now we're asking Bill's assistant to do this and hopefully this camera there we go does Bill's that assistant have a name? working a little better oh, there's Bill there's Bill. Bill yeah Bill how are you I see you yeah we finally got to work in here you look terrific hey it's great out here yeah who is the guy with all the tattoos uh, I, I really don't know him too well I ran into him in the store there he's a do big you, fan of yours do you still have a wallet on you? you bet okay alright I'll be back soon all right, good, All right. Bill. Hurry back. All right, let's move on. Now, that's real-time communications, but what I really I want to turn this off? Now, we can just leave it. Okay. I want to come over here to this machine and talk to you a little bit about how other folks can create solutions using this Windows Messenger technology. All right. So it's not just what we put in, the video, the voice, being able to share applications, but it's what other people can do, too. So here uh, I have Windows Messenger. Imagine this is my work machine. In fact, this version of Windows Messenger is updated. And everyone who has Windows XP today yeah. can get an updated version of Windows Messenger. It's that kind of thing Bill was talking about where we continually improve Windows XP. So here's my Messenger account. I have a bunch of contacts. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is using communications to make existing scenarios better. The folks from McAfee are experts at protecting your PC against viruses. And they've done a, a version of their application specific to Windows XP. And one of the things that they have done is taken advantage of this communications technology to be able to notify people when an important virus event is happening. So they can actually send out an alert, and it'll pop up on your screen just like that to tell you if you need to be aware about oh, a particular virus. Okay. So that's one example. Another example, uh, Verizon, actually the largest phone company in the US, um, they're doing work with Windows Messenger to make using your phone actually work a little bit better through the power of the PC. 
So here I've gone to a Verizon tab in Messenger, and I can see whether I have any voicemail. I can see whether there's caller ID for me. And one cool thing that they can do is they can tell you if you're getting a phone call at a place you're not. So if I'm at work and my phone rings at home, they can notify me with a pop-up telling me that I've just received a call at home. And in fact, I could even transfer the call from home to work or check my voicemail, and the PC makes it easy for people wow. to find those kinds of features. Okay. Um, another thing that folks are doing with this, there's this company called CNM, and they do work with phones. And what they've tried to do is use Windows Messenger to help connect people over phones. So what I'm going to do actually is select a bunch of my contacts here. I won't select quite all of them. Um, I'm going to add them to the CNM application, and I can do lots of stuff with these people. But what I'm going to do actually is start a conference call. I'm going to use my PC to start a conference call. And right now, the CNM network is setting up a conference call. It just takes it a minute. And then it's going to dial all these people's phones. And if all of them? It's going to dial all these phones and put them together in a conference call. And sometimes the cell network takes a little while. In fact, there are the phones. And uh, we have a phone here for you because we put you on the conference call. And out there in the audience, we have some folks who have cell phones that we've invited into this conference call. You can go ahead and answer that. I don't know how. How do I do you just uh, The green button answers the phone. And there Hello. And you're on the conference call. We're not going to spend time in the conference call. Um, you get the idea. If I wanted no, to I want to be a part of the conference. <laughs> if I wanted to have this conference call, and if someone was being a pain and I wanted to boot them out, I could select them. You see here in the app. And I could Is mute them. Yeah. No offense. I didn't mean to. I wasn't talking about you, necessarily. Um, I can chat with people while yeah. I'm having the conference call. So this really makes communication easier. And the nice thing about it is if you use Windows Messenger and you have a bunch of buddies, they're already ready and available for you to set up conference calls and do lots of other things with. So you guys have joined everything. Every year you get a little closer to joining everything together. We're trying to get all these yeah. devices and applications to work together mm -hmm. in a way that people can get things done and then allow all these other companies to create great new services Fantastic. and features for their customers. The last thing we have to show, this is an application from FYE. FYE is a large retailer in the US. They sell music and video. And they've created an application for Windows XP that pulls together media and communications to create a community around people buying music and videos. So I want you to imagine that I uh, recently visited an FYE store. And if I have one of these little FYE frequent buyer cards, they'll scan it in when I buy a CD. Uh, so imagine I just bought this Everclear CD at a store. And then when I log on to my PC, I can go to their application, click on, right here it says these are albums that I recently bought. Mm -hmm. I can click on this album and literally from any PC, click on listen to the music and be able to listen to my music wherever I am. So FYE is working with the record companies to make this kind of music, be able to distribute music to wherever you are on a PC, a reality today. That's one of the things that it'll do. It'll let you get your music anywhere. Another thing that it does is it creates a community around your friends and your family, the people who are your buddies. So you see right here in the FYE program, I have my buddies. I can see which ones are online. I can send them an instant message. I could conference with them and see it right here. But the other thing that I can do is I can tell which of my buddies have what albums. So in this example, my sister, Nancy, actually owns this album. And in fact, I heard it at her house, and that's what made me decide to go out and buy it. And if I want, I can share the list of music that I have bought from mm -hmm. FYE and have my buddies share that with me. So here it's telling me that my friend Chris Dangler has shared his music collection. So what I can do is go over here, load up Chris's collection, which means the list of music that he's purchased, and I can and try bring to, it to your computer. Well, I can look at the music that he's bought and see whether that gives me ideas for music that I might want to buy myself. Uh -huh. So I can see here, you know, Chris is into Sting, Everclear. So that might give me an idea of what to mm -hmm. buy. And finally, maybe I'll remember that uh, Chris's birthday is coming up. I can see his wish list, navigate to something like the Shrek video, and if I want to preview it, I can just click on that, uh, click Show Trailer. And the FYE servers will download the, the content in a secure way so that I can view a trailer for a video right on my PC. You know, it just boggles the mind. It really does. So that is, gives you an example of how the platform capabilities allow other companies to create lots of great solutions mm -hmm. and deliver them to people from media to communications and so on. So that's about it. So we should wrap up. And, and actually, I expect Bill will be back here somewhere. Where do you think he is? I think he's probably on his way back to the theater. Um, are you feeling like this here is all going to work? Yeah, here's you? Bill Gates, everybody. Look, he came back safe and sound. Yeah, it's right out there. Huh. So, Regis, how, how did you like Windows XP? 
Well, I got to tell you, uh, I learned a lot. And you know what I learned most of all? That on Sunday night, he and his wife like to sit on the couch. And play <laughs> no, I learned a bunch of stuff here, Bill, but I... <laughs> I it, really, <laughs> it really knocks you out. Uh, I guess the people who are more familiar with it are, are really impressed, and I am too, but I must tell you, there's a lot to learn, but it's easier this time to learn it. You, you made bet. it a lot easier, and that's the key for me, sim simplicity. All right, well, you've done a great job with the product launch. I wanted you to have... Uh, as a cheap product launcher, one of these jackets. Oh, how nice. Made, so. All right, fine. Look at this. I'm proud to be a part of it. Thank All you, right. Joe, for everything. Thanks for your help. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Joe. Good work. Good luck. Thanks. Look what I got, Joe. Well, during the demonstrations, I hope you got a sense of the breadth of partners that we're working with. In every one of those, you had many companies with new software, new services. Uh, many of those are uh, partners that we've had for many years. Uh, many of them, like Verizon, FYE, Nikon, are people that are, are new partners to Microsoft. And when you build a platform like this, you've got to reach out. We've been doing that uh, before the launch of the product. We're going to keep doing that uh, because that's going to be uh, very key to the, su the success that comes together here. So more partners than uh, easily fit on one slide. Uh, but a, a lot that goes into that. At Microsoft, of course, we are building uh, some key products that show off Windows XP. Uh, Office XP, uh, perhaps the most important one of those, was built uh, assuming Windows XP would come along, and it, it uh, shows it off quite well. We'll also have a new release of our online client, uh, MSN version 7, with rich photo connections, rich communication connections, and a, a national broadband offering uh, that, that uh, is shipping at the same time as Windows XP and, of course, was designed to take full advantage of it. So all these things on top of Windows really just extend the experience. Where are we in terms of momentum? Well, in business, uh, we've got a lot of major businesses that have moved even faster than we expected to get out there with deployments. Wells Fargo, Citigroup, BMW, Reed Elsevier, Anil, uh, Commonwealth Bank. Worldwide, uh, people are seeing the reliability having a, a quick payback for them. And so they're fitting it in to their upgrade cycle. That continuous improvement is very important to them. Uh, from consumers, uh, we have uh, the most pre-orders ever on this, uh, 100,000. Uh, so those are, are huge numbers, actually more than twice what we have with Windows 95. Um, if you go into a store to buy a PC today, uh, you'll see that uh, those PCs overwhelmingly have XP. In fact, there are over 5 million PCs worldwide sitting in stores ready to go with XP. So very key to this uh, selling season that, that, that's coming along. Uh, so certainly, since Windows 95, there's never been anything like it. We've learned a lot since then, and we're launching off of a, a much uh, bigger industry, a much bigger installed base uh, than ever before. And we think that that uh, will, will drive things uh, forward in a big way. So what kind of things can you expect to see when you go into those stores? Well, uh, each retailer will be creative in their own way about packaging neat new things uh, because of the extra traffic they're going to have. Uh, you'll see that uh, many of them, particularly with the Pro Edition, are including RAM. And I was amazed to see that uh, you can get 128, 128 megabytes of free RAM or even more in many of these offers. Uh, one of our partners in the 802.11 world, Wayport, is saying that all their connections be free for XP users uh, all over the next three months. And then the variety of deals, uh, software add-ons, peripheral add-ons, digital cameras, uh, all, all the things that show off why uh, we, we needed this new platform, uh, the retailers have put neat things together that go around that. Uh, the, the consumer version is a $99 upgrade. And that's traditionally what we've done. Uh, the professional version is a $199 upgrade. Again, the same as we've done in the past, despite the, the incredible uh, new capabilities that we've got here. So we want to make it easy to move up uh, to this new level, and uh, the retailers are, are helping us to do that. 
So there's a lot of progress that starts with Windows XP. Uh, over this holiday, if you take all the different systems and peripherals, uh, the total uh, size, the total se selling worldwide will be over 100 billion. Uh, the product fits into the need to re-energize sales, uh, fits into the need to have this overall ecosystem uh, uh, tackle the new scenarios, uh, whether it's cameras or DVD, or all the different things you've, you've seen. Uh, and it's an opportunity to drive uh, communications things uh, up to a whole new level. So a lot of new beginnings here uh, as the computer industry moves into a phase assuming the, the much richer platform. As part of the, the launch here today, uh, you know, we are not only celebrating the product, uh, but we're celebrating uh, what's gone on uh, in the, the spirit of New York City, the resilience of this city. And so as part of the launch, we have a free uh, Sting concert uh, that's taking place uh, today. It's a free concert for everybody to uh, go and be a part of that. And I understand uh, Sting is already here and warming up. Uh, let's look and uh, see if he looks like he's, he's almost ready. Good morning, everybody. This is Sting here. I trust everything's going well at the launch. The band and I are uh, preparing ourselves for the show at 1 o'clock, so please come over and have a great time. See you later. <laughs> so we're very excited. We're focused on providing innovations in software, um, driving the, the continuous improvement uh, for a, a much better experience. And there's a lot going on here that, that speaks to this decade and what's going to happen in this de decade. Uh, we can kind of sum it up in terms of, of saying, yes, you can. Neat new things, uh, better ways of working together, driving the industry to, to help with productivity throughout all sectors of the economy. So it was wonderful to have you here today. We've had a lot of fun with this launch. Uh, it, it's fantastic. And please come celebrate with us at Bryant Park. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you can pick up your copy of Windows XP in the south and west lobby